There were two main draws to this remaster. The visuals were already great and thus had very little improvement to offer. And while I expected the lost levels to be a high point of the experience, No Return kept drawing me back in. And of course No Return did seem to me that it's going to be the main element of The Last of Us Part 2 remaster. While additionally I thought that the lost levels would provide some intrigue, and as I continue playing through, well I realized that they were too short and too few. And on top of that, they were only the only side of the story that they would tell. So let's touch on, on the No Return mode. The objective of the game is quite straightforward. You have to make it through five encounters of varying but random difficulty before taking on one of the game's iconic bosses. At first, you can only access Ellie and Abby, but as you finish encounters with them, you unlock additional characters and playing as them unlocks even more, and of course so on. This method of gradual earned unlocking is a rewarding way to help you out before becoming familiar with the challenges, providing you with the plenty of quick wins even if you do not finish the run. As you improve, the challenges get harder, requiring you to work harder while still rewarding steady progression. While some of the challenges like Lev's involving explosive arrows, Tommy's requiring scoped kills, and so on, can be overly dependent on random encounters, unfortunately variety is just not always the name of the game. The game has four different level types, Assault, which is killing everything in waves, Hunted, which is surviving for the predetermined amount of time, Capture, which is killing everything in a single wave in time to open a safe, and Holdout, which is killing about 20 enemies before your ally perishes. And lastly, there are boss encounters, which it places you right in the middle of the, with the boss in the arena and you have to fight him off. I would say the easiest of these is definitely the arcade bloater, who can be easily outran and only requires you to maintain respectable distance and ammunition to defeat them. And the toughest is the Rat King, who can destroy your run in an instant unless you are very alert. Although the maps are simply the ones you have already played in, in the base of the game, it goes above and beyond to add unique features, such as each character having their own loadout, unique perks, for example Joel and Tommy are stronger melee attackers, but are unable to dodge. Manny has 150% health, but is only able to find medical kits. And most intriguing of all is Yara, who always has her brother by her side to help. Additionally, there are a variety of what the game refers to as mods. For example, although Yara is always accompanied by Lev, other characters may have allies for the special encounters, and levels can be made easier with features like faster movement and lower enemy health, or the ability to set enemies on fire with a single hit. Similarly, the challenges can range from simple additions like a photo mode filter or mirror mode to more complex ones like Molotov cocktails dense fog enveloping the entire area, or enemies that explode upon death. There are also minor rewards known as gambits, such as using three weapons in a wave or landing a headshot. The most intriguing variation though may be found in the skins. Ellie and Abby have 20, while the others have only a few. Our two main heroes can equip these skins in the main game, most can be purchased with the in-game money, though some require unlocking. They can be used for in-game skins representing other video games. Or for more imaginative purposes, Abby can dress like Mad Max, and Ellie can be an astronaut from the museum. It is unfortunate that other characters do not receive this sort of treatment, but having the option to include them in the main game gives them some of the additional meaning and a pleasant bonus if you plan to replay the remastered campaign. No Return is essentially roguelike and it delivers, but if you were hoping for any kind of narrative development or, or through line, you would not find it here unfortunately. Why these characters are fighting and what is the end goal is only exists as far as the points on the scoreboard. And though there is nothing wrong with that, it feels a little out of the character for Naughty Dog. It does feel a little unfortunate that it launches so soon after God of War Ragnarok's Valhalla. Valhalla's link to the God of War's overall narrative make it a far more rewarding experience. No Return's timing is bound to draw comparisons to Valhalla, but that aside, the game's design is my biggest complaint. Limited resources and a small map forces you to spend most of your time stealthily focusing on the melee kills. 
Your best weapons such as shotguns or flamethrowers are typically saved for the crucial encounters, and some characters are not even able to unlock silencers. It is a roguelike, take on very specific aspect of The Last of Us gameplay, and the way it decentivizes action can be off-putting when a full run takes up to 30 minutes. That is often the hardest obstacle for a roguelike to overcome. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered No Return is a fun mode, but only for a short while. All in all, No Return is a substantial enough to warrant its own review, which is to say a lot about the mode in itself, even though it's not on the level of the Hades or Returnal, but it brings a variety where it can, and always invites you back for more. Do let me know as well what did you think about the No Return mode from The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, see you guys all, and have a wonderful day.